Once you recognized yeah. that God existed and you came to that conclusion, what, what made you choose a swim? Because as, as Muslims, a lot of the times that I, I think we sit back and go, well, these non-Muslims, these disbelievers, they need to find Islam. And otherwise, that means their hearts are hard. And, you know, there, there's a lot of judgment within the fact that someone's not Muslim uh, I agree. Uh, involved. But it's like, well, we're, we're technically non-Muslims to others. You know, we're technically non-believers mm -hmm. to others. And we're ridiculing them for not going out and seeking Islam and seeking the Quran and learning when we've never sought the Bible or the Torah and learned and maybe, you know, maybe we're wrong. So it's like, wh why did you yeah. choose Islam? And what made you say that Islam's the correct religion when there's so many other religions out there? Uh, and, and especially that a lot of people go, if, if, if Islam and Christianity and Judaism believe the same thing, basically, and they all think each other are wrong, then they're, the, then they all seem to be foolish in a way. So what made you say you're asking, them? You're asking the most important question that I believe uh, in our time. That is the most important question. What makes Islam unique? I always say the greatest challenge that we have in the modern world, and in America in particular, is to um, present the uniqueness of our faith in a universal language. Right? That people should understand why Islam is unique, but in a way that is also universal, accessible, in a manner that resonates with them. Um, because a lot of people, let's be honest, if uh, I, I posted something about this the other day, I was just like, you know, if someone who wasn't Muslim walked in our spaces, a masjid, any of our spaces, would they see Islam as a beautiful, viable, alternative way of life? Or would they think, that's a little weird, you know, resonate with this and walk out. So that is the challenge, okay? And look, there's no one answer to this because human beings are different and what resonates with someone may not resonate with someone else, okay? So everyone's journey looks a little different as to what makes Islam the most viable, beautiful, what makes Islam true with a capital T? Because guess what? Islam so is the truth. With a capital T. Uh, for me, I don't think they're all the same. I think that's a common myth that people have. All these religions preach the same. Well, no, actually. Islam is very, very, very strict in prohibiting, prohibiting interest. Okay? That paints an entire economic model that prevents abuse, economic disparity, and economic inequality. Right? That is very different than other religions we have a very strict prohibition right god literally says in the quran like you 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 have declared war god will declare war on you and vice versa in engaging with interest dealings and we're not talking about like small we're talking about a system of interest right an economic system that's one right and uh, another thing our theology is different muslims don't just believe god exists that there's a creator we believe that God necessarily exists, meaning it's not like there's an if, right? Maybe there's a God. We're not agnostic about this. We're not deists either. God can be, cannot be like his creation. He cannot be the sun or manifest in human form or any of... Theology is fundamentally different, right? So, you know, when we try to paint it all in the same kind of thing, that's where people find it to be foolish, right? Because they're like, well, like you said, it all seems to be the same thing. Why y'all are disagreeing? We have to be very confident and gentle and merciful and saying, no, 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 it's not all the same thing, right? We have a different theology. We have a different economic system. We, we have a different, completely different way of life. All of that in unison is what, what made me feel uh, 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 you know, Islam is the truth. We always start with theology. The theology made sense. And look, I think what you're asking is, you know, like, does every Muslim, shouldn't every Muslim be reading the Bible and reading other scriptures to find out if their religion is the truth? It's a very good question. And at the end of the day, that's impossible. I'm not going to be able to read or study in intense detail every single scripture that exists, every way of life. Okay, 
but I can know enough to know whether that system as a whole is a viable authoritative system for living, right? So if I believe that God, you know, that it makes sense logically that God cannot be a human white man in the sky, well, I've kind of ruled out some religions without <laughs> knowing the inner bitty details, <laughs> right? Fair so, enough. you know, we don't, we don't have to know everything because that's impossible. But there should be first an understanding of one's own faith, what it actually says. And then, yes, age the other. And personally, there are experiential aspects to why Islam is true. But that's not necessarily why, first and foremost, I believe Islam is true. I believe Islam is true because, you know, of our theology, right? It's I rooted in reason. I, ooh, Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I jump think, in whenever you want, man. We're just talking. I think you, you, you and I uh, found Islam to be true for, for very similar reasons. I couldn't find a God that satisfied the God in my mind which was a, an all-powerful, all-being, only one God uh, who was capable of everything and can do everything. Um, and one of the miracles of Islam is that it even went beyond my imagination of how great a God, a God can be. Uh, mm. all, the other, all the other theologies, you know, either God was kind of weak, couldn't do certain things, or he shared power, um, and so yeah. on and so forth, are you, like you're saying. And I'm like... It seems to be for anyone listening, really the only religion, the only people in the world who say there's only one God and one God only who's all powerful, all merciful, all being who sees and hears everything is a sin. I think, there's you know, another really underrated, beautiful thing, Habib, because the natural question someone will ask, well, hey, Jews, don't Jews believe in the same God? They believe in a one God. They don't ascribe partners to him. What I found really fascinating, and, and I, I usually talk about this, is that's unique about Islam is that it's the only religion that directly and indirectly affirms all other faiths in some way, affirms the truthfulness, aspects of truthfulness in all other faiths, right? We have scholars that are comfortable saying Buddha could have been a prophet of Islam. There's a, there's a, there's a consistency in the message right? That we're not a unique religion in the sense that we believe there were prophets and different sharias from the beginning of Adam all the way to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they all said the same thing, you know, in, 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 a, in a broad sense. There's one God, submit, worship him, you know, for your happiness in this life and the next. That was really the basic message. So what's amazing about Islam is that like, hey, we love Moses. Oh, we also love Jesus. And Buddha, yeah, maybe he could have been a prophet. Why not, right? The difference is that we may say that, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the message has changed, right? Which is and a fact. Exactly. And, and many, many people don't deny that fact, right? People know that. And... They're, they have really interesting arguments as to how they've dealt with those alterations and changes and right. But that's another amazing thing about Islam. Like which religion has preserved its scripture like Muslims, which uh, point, point, point to me, a, 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 a group of, of, of a thousand six year olds who've memorized their scripture from front to back. <laughs> Only Muslims have, it's a miracle. Yeah. Like you literally have a seven year old that if you bring him a physical copy of the Quran and you say, hey, check this for me, he'll tell you, ah, there's mistakes in it, go burn it. From his own memory, seven-year-old can do this, right? These are, there's so many of these really fascinating miracles. You know, Islam is unified on scripture, even across sex and differences. No one denies a single letter of the Quran. And even the variations of recitation are, already affirmed by everyone and known even the disputes are exactly accounted for <laughs> even the disputes are unified it's so it, i was just talking to my boss about that the other day he was like how is it that islam doesn't have any sex in it i'm like i honestly don't know how to answer this question it's from really from god because christianity has thousands upon thousands and islam has 
one really and then there's like two you know and then and then offshoots. It gets, yeah. yeah yeah there's offshoots yeah. yeah you're right you know for the and, majority they all agree yeah in judaism i would i would argue that judaism doesn't even believe in an all-powerful god because jacob beat him in a wrestling match and then god was like mm -hmm. let me go and jacob was like only if you know you take away the pain right so it was an, it's an odd story in the old testament because jacob is asking god to take away the pain right in, in, in which implying that god is so powerful that he can fix jacob's wound but then mm. jacob beats him in a wrestling match it's a very <laughs> odd story but it's a good point you know like i i i think you know we also we have to try our best to be as earnest and intellectually honest as possible and reading reading what scholars of those traditions say about these examples right so that we can be intellectually honest because i'm pretty sure you know there's a christian or someone else who's not muslim that opens up the quran and says look how silly this is kill them wherever you find them what a violent religion I see. without so being I may be honest taking it out about of context. you know I see. Allah Adam, you're probably look, there there are many other reasons, <laughs> right? And you're probably right, but I think it is important if we're serious about being intellectually honest, which is one of the unique things I believe about Muslim civilization. You know, the scholars cared about intellectual honesty, that even the very arguments of those against the prophet were listed in their history books, hmm. right? Because they wanted to say, look. We're not afraid of these things. We can engage all of them. And we'll even record them in our own books. In fact, many of these arguments against Islam, they only, people only have access to them because of our own scholars that didn't shy away from recording them. Right? Interesting. So, you know, if we can do that, it points again to the immense care and scrutiny when it came to the preservation of our scripture and the preservation of our revealed texts, right? And I mean, look at it. No historical method, critical method in history was like the method of verifying whether a hadith was true or not. What is a hadith? Something, a report about something the Prophet either said or did or you know, approved or confirmed about someone else, anything about the Prophet Muhammad That's hadith literature, right? And our deen is about Quran and Sunnah. Sunnah, we know the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet, which is the embodied Quran. Quran lived, right? In the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We know that through the science of Hadith, right? No historical, critical method in history has ever been produced like the science of Hadith, where it's like, I need to know how strong your memory is. I need to know, oh, this guy is prone to drinking. Can we really trust his uprightness? to narrate something about the Prophet ﷺ, right? We literally have an entire science scrutinizing every aspect of someone's life who claims the Prophet said or did something, right? Why? Because we cared about the truth. And we cared about being intellectually honest. And we're the ones, Muslim scholars were the ones that said, by the way, this hadith is not even authentic. You know, this may not have been something the Prophet ﷺ said or did. And this one, we have no source for it. It's utterly fabricated. 